Like everybody else, I would like to begin by thanking Patrick and Bob and congratulations to you. They just keep putting out these exceptional issues of Ambush Review. Wow. Uh, they have also been extremely gracious to Brana Dixon, who is here tonight. Brana was Mika's friend, his wife, his support over a 40-year period. Um, she has uh, also been uh, wonderful to me as Bob and Patrick have been working with uh, Mika's work introducing it to uh, in, in the United States. Uh, it is especially moving to be reading Mika's work here. In Yugoslavia and in the former Yugoslavia, his work is very much associated with the larger beat aesthetic, the sensibility. Um, Abrana says, Mika called Kerouac, Dad. <laughs> Less than a year before he died, when I was living in Asia, Mika sent me this email. The Beat Museum opened last Wednesday at 540 Broadway. I was there. Michael McClure was there. Wavy Gravy was there. The son of Carolyn and Neil Cassidy was there. Where the hell were you? <laughs> it's interesting to think about what the beats, all the people in this museum, might have sounded like if they had been refugees of war, if that had been their set of concerns, and if they had been uh, writing outside their own language, their country, their culture. Mm -hmm. This first piece is from Ambush Number One, and it's called America for Beginners. <coughs> Take the night flight from Budapest that's the best. Go to Milan and request an entry visa. The U.S. Embassy people will beam at you. Rent a car with German license plates and drive to Frankfurt. Buy a Northwest ticket. They are the cheapest. Land at the Detroit airport and proceed to San Francisco. Once you're here, the immigration officers will sense your troubles, your eagerness and resolve to become an American overnight. Don't forget to unlock your bag and offer him a piece of the cheese pie your mom crammed in there before you departed to become a sailor without sails. Uh, this is from Ambush 2. Uh, it is called For Past in the sense of a four word, so F O R E. For Past. I never thought I'd come to such a decision. I've always taken it as an accomplished fact that literature and writing were for remembering that they were like precious streams of human kindness, wisdom, and love. And that people write to be remembered. <laughs> that is, any personality large enough to be embroidered in the reader's imagination. It was like that with Tolstoy, with Kafka, with Hemingway and Camus, with most of the authors I've read and admired. That is why I can still summon up names, scenes, passion.
passions, vicissitudes. But I'm not here for a, a comparative literature exam. I have now decided that I should write in order to forget, to be forgotten. Neither my past nor my future should be remembered. I will use writing to erase every single good and ugly recollection that is nesting in the chips inside my head. From now on, my typewriter will serve as a huge blot out generator. Once I forget, I can start to breathe. I can begin to open my eyes, my pores, my veins. I might even lift my eyes to the sky ah, or talk to people. Conversation is a great way of communicating. <coughs> Once you have no memory, you don't have to explain where you come from because you cannot. No one asks my plans because I don't have any. I am continually in the present state. Oh, I, I hope to reach that level. I'll work hard at it, at it, write as much as I can, just to be able to start my life at 45. This is not an apology, but a statement. I cannot dedicate my book to anyone. By the time I'm done with it, I will have forgotten everyone, and the memory of me will have been deleted from everyone's minds and hearts. I don't feel bad about this. On the contrary, I am eager to start writing. Uh, so, this is from Ambush 4. It is called Thinking About Agents. And I think you might enjoy knowing that Miss Maxine Grofsky is an actual person. Okay. Thinking About Agents. Dear Editor, I immensely enjoyed the article on agents. As a published novelist from the former Yugoslavia and a newcomer to the U.S. literary stage, I wish to offer some of my experience that may be helpful to another neophyte entering this battlefield. Agents are rarely used in Europe. A writer deals with the publisher directly, so when one establishes himself or herself, he or she becomes a house writer. Most of the Bay Area literary agents are looking for something good and contemporary. My new sixth novel, The Former Future, deals with the turmoil back in Yugo. After briefly consulting with some of the agents, I have decided to write a cookbook entitled, What to Do with Broccoli Leftovers. There may be some wet bucks there. I understand one agent didn't take on a client who brought his manuscript in person, handwritten, feather and ink, entitled Crime and Punishment. The novel was almost okay. Poor Fiedor didn't know a thing about desktop publishing. In this context, here are some hints about the look of your manuscript and the ways of sending it over to an agent. Number one, depending on the plot and characters, be very careful about choosing your font. For example, never use Roman T scalable 14 point italic if you are writing about Rwanda. <laughs> it just doesn't go. Number two, 
Be extremely careful about the stamps you stick on the envelope with your work. <laughs> Don't use animals if you're writing about the government. <laughs> Number three, it won't hurt if you spill a touch of fragrance into the envelope. <laughs> Depending on the characters in your novel, use opium only if you're definitely sure what you have is not a book for children. <laughs> Number four. One of the things that is widely overlooked is selecting the right post office to mail your work from. Don't ever use Lathrop, California, if you are sending your masterpiece to Miss Maxine Grofsky in New York, to Fifth Avenue. She wouldn't dig the smell. Number five. Agents are very concerned about format. The best way to avoid having either a 150 or a 500 page novel is to let them do the page numbering. Leave blank spaces for numbering, especially the pages with boring passages. Sixth and final. Let them choose the topics. You're a writer. So let them tell you what to write about. They know. You're not on the market for thinking. They think for you. And never forget, once you sign a contract, you are married to an agent. You only divorce when you start thinking. Oh,